dumpster in here. Right? Uh, lock it. Okay, we know it's nice and tight in the tricep, higher up if we can, and somewhere around the back here. And the idea at this point is you're pulling them towards you. You're pulling them towards you, trying to pull the attacker in. We then swap, we're going to some kind of flow. Arms go through the inside, arms through on the inside. Yep, there we go, that's it. On the inside, and again, and again, and again. Okay, so we want to focus on now, it's just going to head a little bit tighter. I'm a firm believer that your head has to be in line when you're tackling. So if a head's too far away, this is when you're weak, your head gets pushed away. But if your head's directed towards where you try and tackle, you've got a better chance of being on the tackle being successful or dominant. So even in this, we want to get ourselves a little bit closer. <coughs> the heads, we go from there. Okay, boys. Can you see this? You see the picture we're doing? On your feet then, fellas, grow a partner. Someone about the same sort of, sort of height. Yeah. Makes it a bit easier for you. So, the ball, you close to each other. Okay, so you're me, you won't let you know. Baby face, Ernie. You've been no one down the off since the last year. Okay, so you go. Okay, now you're to try to a couple of minutes. I'm surprised actually. Shut up. I like. I'm just going to work out what your arms are doing. You can go work out what someone else is doing. There's a pattern made of my arms. Let's get me used to it. I'm so sorry. This is so much easier. Fish on my shoulders, the leech on the top. I wasn't sure you were choosing, I was away from it, so I was missing. Big pump train. I was doing it a bit. Jigging the tail. There's no game. There's no game. What's very bad? Yeah. And you're just wishing that. Just rock up and see. Just have a couple of clips, you'll be fine. Yeah. 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 So, uh, a good kind of barometer is we want to try and use like a line or something like that when you're starting off. So the idea is that your feet is always going forward and we want to be aggressive when we're tackling. Our foot goes back, our foot goes forward. Our foot goes back, our foot goes forward. Sometimes you'll see people do it like this when they're trying to pummel to go through. It's not what we're looking for. We want studs in the ground all the time. So nice and strong when we're going to tackle. Copy? Okay, let's go. Have a little look. The point there is also the shoulder that could reach the shoulder Correct. Correct. Spine straight, right? Correct. So, as you get better with this, my boy Phil, you go first, you go flying, you get nice and warm with this. Okay, is that we want to try and be, the moment the boys, are, as I get used to it, are pulling away quite a lot. And it's a bit like this. You know, they want to show everyone how strong they are. Okay? But what I try and do is try and stay as tight as we go now, Phil. So actually I've put this a lot closer. It doesn't get better. Go ahead. Go a bit closer. We get really good. Just start. Dominate someone backwards. So we'll try that in first. So feet, feet uh, shoulder width apart again. Right shoulder, right leg. And at the end of it, we'll try and get that squeeze in. So if you think about in terms of attack again, I'll pull up when we're tackling, what's it in here? We actually want to try and get this in nice and close to try and dominate somebody. So when the impact is like that, you, you want it to be a little bit lower, so you show the impact. And then when we're hitting, we want to try and pull them in towards us. Be it leg tackle, be it upper body tackle, makes no odds. So with this here, at the end of that kind of pummel, here, to try and squeeze them in. So you're also putting your hips through as well? It's kind of like with the, with the problem is that you can't hit everything. Yeah. Because otherwise you end up being a bit like like this. You're going to get quite chesty all the time. Or if you want to keep your head in tight, you sort of get on top of each other. It's a bit awkward. So you've got to try and think the balance of what it is you're trying to get. For this, I'm trying to get multiple grabs. I've gone quick. I'm trying to get myself in here nice and tight. Feeling this. So when I'm tackling somebody, I've instantly got things that I can try and grab a hold of. It feels like second nature to me. Um, in terms of 
you know, you want to get it a bit warmer, you might go harder, so you in nice and tight. Nice and tight. In nice and tight. Give me just a bit. Really <laughs> <laughs> nice and tight. Nice so you're, you're grabbing the bicep, so what we're looking for is you're triceps. looking for an anchor, tricep, sorry. So you're looking for a good anchor point, something to grab hold yeah, and so just to drive through. Let's call these like hooks and handles. <laughs> <laughs> some handle up, Phil. Right. So we're going to hold some in here, we've got some around the back. And the idea is kind of like if you're thinking in terms of a tackle, if I've got Phil, I'm going to use my head as a kind of steering point. If I'm in here with a tackle, I've got something here. I can kind of control them a little bit. So the idea is you manipulate the attack. So in a in a forward tackle sense, he's going through there. One with him. Oh, you kind of got somewhere you can try and break the ball a little bit. That's what I'm trying to do. So, okay, we've got back to pairs of colours. He's come out just a fucking bully and he's like, come here, big lad. He's coming up into the left of the day. Yeah. That's awesome. He's going to fashion that and use it to drive through. Sit down, Captain. Yeah, these things are going to wander out. Big old. You say you wouldn't think about the head as well as a form boy coming and you lose your head to drive through the opposition. These two need to get their head tight up because it's fucking around. So you get your pump and rather than getting his head and working in. Yeah. You need to slow it down. Slow it and just change the Again, a bit of a believer for Phil. Okay, so if Phil, if Phil was coming towards me, and I hit him, what he, what he wants to do, or Phil you to go the other way around, you hit me. <laughs> so if you go hit, hit me there, is that I actually want to try and get the hips away from him, so I can bump up and spin and get myself back out. So what we're trying to do is that when we hit someone, in, I don't want to try and get the hips close, he's got nowhere for his legs to go. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So, with the pummel now, <coughs> when people are in nice and tight, so when you're in this position, or you're in that position, at any given point, or you might do on a whistle, or on the third go, or fifth go, I just go whenever he wants to go to randomise it. James, you're going to try and pull away from Rafe. Space in the body, just in case. Okay, so just start pummeling. Remember your feet, James? Remember your feet, James? Yeah. Whenever you want to pull away, mate, you pull away. I'll get started, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant, Rafe. Do so you notice what Rafe was doing there? So it's not, it's not trying to, when James is there, trying to pull away. You try and pull away, and I'm trying to resist him. It's a wrestle. I'm trying to 
trying to follow through my tackle, that's what's going to happen. So I'm just preparing myself to get good habits for the tackling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. People going to get that go, do you? Are to move off public? Ready to move off public, right? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of things we do sometimes if you're doing a bit of pummeling. Obviously, in rugby, you want to try and get second effort as much as possible. You might do a pummel, so if you guys need to a pummel in there, me and Phil are pummeling here. Then we have a thing called reload, which is just back into the game, so we might both hit the floor. And then we find another partner to go and pummel, reload, hit the floor, or go reload, spin down to the next person to make a three tackle. So, right, just, just keep it buried because this can get quite stale. We'll do this for about three minutes probably. Um, there's different variations with it and that's it. Two or three times a week. But the players aren't quite averse to it now, we'll be doing it for about a year and a half. Happy enough? Okay. Right. Um, so, the reason we're doing this is really to give us some good skills, good techniques, uh, good principles in terms of a tackle. Um, walk around the golf fellas. Do one like you want. Yeah, ready to hit somebody? Okay, don't stop me, you're alright. Okay. So, just to reduce the contact to start off with, um, we we'll generally try and practice like technique, out and out technique, this kind of distance. For, for two reasons really. One, it allows us to get better technique and be deliberate with the foot placement, be deliberate with your head and all the rest of it. Secondly, you really have to hit something to get a move on. But because there's no cadence into the collision, it reduces the contact. So, by this kind of distance, you might have walking in a little bit, something like that. And James is going to try and go through. So James, what's the most important thing to you in life? The ball. The ball. He's got a shallow life, that's good. But uh, the ball's the most important thing to him. So, he's going to try and book weight. Back towards me. Over to you, James. Okay. So, not too bad. What about your head? Uh, you got tight. You got tight. So, just steer that back in towards the tackle. Or what about your right arm? Okay, anyone think of his arm? So I'm seeing his arms a bit like this, but it could be like here. You get the more, less space for him to move, the better for us, okay? So if you get your arms around, find them in, bring them in. You can only get this, only get that, that's fine, but try and get them as close to you as possible. One more demonstration for you, James. Go for the back, right? Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. Pretty good, eh? Stop it! All this. Get two hits each. First two hits each. Then you want to go from low to high. Low to high. So beneath them, go through them. If you're going to be attacking, you're not just stopping on the hit. You all start in this sort of line here, fellas. You all go one way. You all come each other. Okay. 
Guys, feel free to walk down if you need to. Feel free to walk down. Much better. Much better. And again, same again. Guys, we're going to do a little bit of questioning in a second, so if you've got any questions, make sure you Phil's got his head going towards me. He's a bit stronger, not a lot stronger, but he's a bit stronger. <laughs> so it's kind of like it, it's, it, it protects you. It also makes sure your eyes go where you look and try and make the tackle. Uh, and obviously the knock on effect as well, I think it increases your dominance. So it doesn't matter if you're leg tackling, which we'll look at in a second, or upper body tackling. If your head's are nice and tight with your point in contact, you've got three points. You've got your shoulder, you've got your head to some extent, and you've got your arms around the back. Uh, we, 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 do, we do a lot of stuff. Um, I, I think one of the things I've noticed um, since we've been coaching uh, the England stuff is that players' technique is, is varying. Like there's not a lot of time spent on like core fundamentals of key skills in rugby, be it playing attack, catching the ball square and delivering the ball square, uh, taking the ball in motion. You see everyone in the Premiership all the time, ball standing still, catching, going out. There's no one taking the ball like that and then going out. So uh, core skills are being coached. Everyone's coaching structure, coaching shape, coaching one three three one two four two or pod systems or round the corner, whatever. They're not talking about how you become a better attacker or my, my sense, a better defender. So like key skills about how you tackle effectively, one, will make you a better tackler, but two, will improve your safety because your, your, your technique's more robust under duress, under pressure, under fatigue. So we, we'll do blocks of that and we do it repeated. So we'll do things where we'll do six tackles in a row, like seven, six, seven contacts in a minute, followed by a decision-making exercise, so we'll put them under duress after as well. Perfect. Couple of questions for the group. How do you build confidence in the ta in tackle in young players, sort of nervous players? How would you build confidence? I guess probably would be one. Yeah. Bit, Look, I mean, obviously there's, there's coaching aids, suits and all that kind of stuff. You can make them. Um, for me, the players that I've coached that have been a little bit nervous or apprehensive, be it from, a, apprehensive might be the wrong word, but, but poor tacklers, going from, say, like Charlie at Sale, coming, coming down to Saracens, was confident to tackle, we practiced it. Like, it's, it's, Simple thing, really, but the more the more you practice something, and gain confidence, and doing something well, I believe that players will get better and get some confidence in that. So, put them in suits, reduce the amount of space they are, crash mats if you've got crash mats available to you, um, things you can do on your knees as well. You know, if, if Phil was coming in even there, same thing. I want to get like a lead leg in. So if Phil was going there, so I'll just go a little bit quicker. So even just in there, simple. We did it when we were young, but we thought stop it. <laughs> 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 um, 
Okay, so. Uh, have you ever thought, Will? Marcus Slimming, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so even it's something like that, you know, the, the, the contact's really low. Um, but just give them a little bit of confidence. Um, yeah. Cool. We, we would say quite often we recommend little and often, so not yeah. doing spending lots and lots of time, yeah. but doing it quite yeah. often is more so with that. We do the same, you know. I think anything you do, the, the skill of what you're doing is always the same, but how you practice it should be different. So if I'm tackling Phil, and it might be, I've done, it's the same as just the other sort of body tackle we're doing. So I've gone, I'm going to do four today, or six today, and we didn't have impact. By next time, I'm going to start opposite Phil, and Phil will send me back to the right. Then Phil comes forward and I hit the left, grab him back, then send me back that way. And so I'm doing the same skill, I'm just going to change the drill, or, or I've done it, something around the corner, or something from on the floor, go around there, but the skill is this bit, you just change how you enter into it to make it feel a bit different for the player. The other question is, do you advocate trying to get hold on sort of leg or leg hook off the ground type stuff? So a couple of players were doing it there where they were lifting legs, just sort of hooking the leg in that contact and driving. I think Craig about wants to answer that question about why we don't do that. Uh, I think the hook in the leg, the risk you take when you hook the leg is obviously you're going into the tip tackle territory. So as soon as you hook the leg to drive them back, if, that, if you can't control that and that leg goes up and the player tips around the horizontal, you're in automatic yellow card territory. So if you can control it, then I suppose you get them on balance, you can clear them out. If it goes wrong, you're going to be off the pitch for permanently over 10 minutes. That's probably why you do. So I, I, I would advocate like around the legs as much as possible. So if I was making a leg tackle or going somewhere on here, I, I want to try and focus on these outside knee. The, re the reason I want to go to outside knees is I get my body more in front. If I focus on inside hip, which is what I was told as a kid, inside hip, attack inside hip, all my body is to the left of Phil now. Whereas I go here, to the outside knee, I've got more of my body in front of them, which means I've got more time to be dominant. The other thing it lends me to do is it means I have to chase my feet. If I chase my feet, it's got my legs going, and I'm not stopping on the tackle, I continue going through. So I kind of have like an outside knee principle when I'm coaching leg tackling. And the same thing when I get around. We spoke a while about like blading, which is sounds, sounds brutal, but the idea is you're using your, your forearm in here try and pull down as you're making that leg tackle. So outside his knee, arms together, and you're trying to drop him around like that. So what I'm thinking is, if you go for the outside knee, you wouldn't have to take going for the calf. Because often, to go for the outside knee, pull the calf, so you've got that club push. So <coughs> you have to move away from that because you're worried about the tip uh, No, no, because, because, because my body, like I saw, hopefully don't sit down, like because my body's going through without, without really hitting Phil, but like, if we're going here, my body's trying to go through the tackle, so my, I actually speak more about keeping my studs in the ground. Okay. So if I tackle Phil here, if Phil goes down, like you go down Phil, and I just keep my feet here, I'm in a pool position, I end up lying like this. Whereas if I, down to your feet, just fall down a few yards after I hit you. If I actually keep my studs in the ground like this, I'm actually in a better position straight away to go and contest and do whatever I need to do. So rather than, rather than trying to think of too many other things, I just have a focus on that, pull them towards you, keep my studs in the ground. Which means my legs will keep going. Just before we go back to the players, um, okay, just for you, in terms of body tackle, what sort of things are you looking at around the contact? Okay, so anything that goes in upper body tackle wise, I think those anchor points are key in terms of having a solid grip so the tackle doesn't ride high. If that tackle rides high, irrespective of it starting low, as soon as it rides high and starts connecting with the head or neck, your players are running a risk of being penalised from penalty through to a red card. And obviously, if you start high and get it really wrong and it's a direct contact, then obviously they, they're going off the pitch probably for 10 minutes. So if it is up for body, I suppose those anchor points are key to make sure you've got that grip so you can achieve what you want to tackle, but also so it doesn't ride high. It has to stay below the line of the shoulder. And that may become problematic going forward because the trophy that World Rugby have, a competition running over June, they've lowered the tackle height to the armpit. Um, their first step of changing the law to lower the tackle height. So that's probably something to watch on going forward. Uh, hopefully what you noticed there as well when we spoke about a tackle was what that dip. So we actually want to hit in and gone up. Because we've got this nice and tight, we're in a good position here. It's being close. Um, as opposed to hitting more like chest and a bit like armor here where you might cast someone with the shoulder. It's actually when to hit down, sorry, low going up. Any more questions? One, I'll just say one more question, we'll get a lot back and forth for the referee room. Could you give us your like referee's position on a seatbelt? Really good answer all new seatbelt tackle. So what would you look for? Yes. Of course, the massive debate at the moment. There's a few at the weekend. So, seatbelt tackle. If you're chasing someone from behind and you go seatbelt over the shoulder, 
doesn't actually make contact with the head or neck. Technically, you can play on. There's no actual offence. It's all about protecting the head and neck. Um, same as if someone's dropping down to score a try. Obviously, their height's massively changed. The only way you can probably tackle them is if your arm is over the shoulder. But obviously, avoiding the head and neck. Um, so there's no, there's no actual issue with it, if it connects, unless it connects with the head or the neck. Um, and then if you go in seatbelt and get it wrong, again, you're running a big risk. If you get it wrong, miss the shoulder and take the head off, then we're going sanctions, red or yellow. Okay, cool. I'm going to ask the players to come back in now. If you've got any more questions, feel free to write them down. And if you've got the yeah. do, we can erase that and start again. Well, I'll just can't just get the players back in. We'll... Any demonstrators? Two different guys. I'll be demonstrating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you want to look at? Leg tackling? What do you, what do you want to do? <laughs> Leg tackling, okay. Oh. okay. okay. Let's sit back there again now. Okay. So, a little bit like we spoke about, just going to sort of come to So, in, in essence, what I spoke about before is I want to try and aim for his outside, his outside knee. So, um, I start off with something to say if you go back to um, Gary Graham over there. Further back. So, we start off with something like in you in the face of me. So, imagine you've got like a row of attackers, so half the balls are there, half the balls are here. All I'm looking for here is, is kind of like getting off the line. So the first bit of defence is, is, is the phase, is the system, is the structure of how you defend. So I, I'm a kind of square channel based defence. Ideally, but I'm not uh, absolute with it, arms quite close. I mean, you start running like this, some people do. When you're tackling, your arms are swinging. So when you kind of shoot from here, it means one, we have to get our feet a bit close to shoot to make a tackle. The second, it's more compact, gets our legs going towards contact, etc. etc. So, if I would go towards the line, I would go and then you make a deviant, uh, de not deviant, <laughs> uh, deviant. Um, might go to the right to left to start off with, I'll be prescriptive, I'll say I want to step that way, so as he gets to the cone, step that way, so we go forward, and as you go through here, I just want to get that feeling with the outside knee, shoulder in, head in a little bit tight, so we'll go a little bit faster. And that's what we're looking for. Knee tap, another thing going through. So you can imagine you get half the ball here. Go here, fellas. Half in red. Five or six. Five or six back here. Okay. Five guys up there, get balls outside. Five guys here. Okay, so you're roughly going to about the cone, yeah. fellas. You normally would say you want to go to, okay? <laughs> We're not looking for like an outrageous um, Jason Robinson kind of sidestep. We're just looking to go here, <laughs> step away about a foot and a half. Sorry, you'd be metric. A metre to the left. Okay. So we're going to go forwards, downside knee. What else do you have to get on? Position, head position. What else? Shoulder position. So position, position, position. What is that attack? What are you looking at? So, yeah. Same position a lot. So what is it? When you say position, what does the position look like? <laughs> you're right. What does it look like? So is it uh, knee leg? <coughs> get back close. Is that what you mean by position? Yes. Can you show me? I'll show you. Picture says thousand yeah. words. Okay. The other thing I want you to focus on, a, a, a kind of coaching thing, is I tend to try and stand behind the back. What I'm looking for, one of the other big reasons why people miss tackles is that as you're going through, is I drop my head while I'm trying to make a tackle. So I'm looking to try and stand behind to see that people are in here and the eyes are up, so I know they're in a strong position. If I find someone that's struggling to keep their head up, I might stand behind with a coloured cone or you know, fingers up or something like that, trying to see how many fingers am I holding up, so make sure that you're still looking through the tackle. This isn't fully live, it's just looking for an outside knee tap when you go through. So as one's gone through, the next person, that first next person. Okay, we'll see them. Let's go. Okay, step on through, go, 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 go. Okay, so your head's down, your head's down, head up, head up, head up. Okay, head down, head down, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Okay, very good, last one's very good. Okay, so the one thing we forgot there, the guy that went two and three, is that your feet were nowhere near where you're trying to get to. Remember that our leg's trying to get towards his outside knee. Best case scenario, is our body's completely in front of the of the attacker. Worst uh, worst case, we're completely to the outside of them. We're then just using our arms to pull them in. So you're trying to get your body in front of them as much as possible. Okay, go again, first you keep cycling in. You boys can do the same down here. Okay. 
Eyes up, eyes up. You all coaches, fellas, if you see the eyes go down, let them know, eh? So we almost want to go like go slow, go that kind of idea. We've well, got off the line, we've won the skating line, our feet are moving, and then we can go back forward again. Okay, so you go forward, you steady yourself, and you go forward again. Two kind of things I was then trying to introduce them to this. So, um, who can go forward here? You go forward, right? One position. Okay, so props, no respect. Okay, so that's smack like a pull up. No respect, really. So it's a prop, and we're going to accelerate all the way. Go on, turn. Who's a 10? Imagine your attack. They can hurt. You. Okay, Danny Cipriani can hurt me. So I want to go. I want to steady myself. I don't want to go right to because he wants to play on the line. And slow, slow, slow. So I know that I'm not going to do to prop forward, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm accelerating. I'm going to go. Knock him out with his boots as much as possible. I'm not going to do it, right? Yeah. Don't, don't panic. Back in the days of the Quite slow. You're actually shortening the stride length as well, so you can change direction. Correct. Correct. So we're just we're trying to avoid where you go here and say so Rafe does a huge step. And I'm here and I'm now lunging towards the attacker. This is where you get reckless with your arms, which is why I try and advocate arms are nice and close. So again, to make a big step up that way, Rafe. So again, so my girlfriend just step myself and then in a better position, so I get my arm across, keep my feet moving. Make sense? Yeah. Obviously, with this kind of thing, you can go. <coughs> you're trying to mirror the uh, the attacker, aren't you? His foot movement. By not going flat on the floor, you're trying to keep on the front of your toes so you can follow them across the pitch. Yeah, look at look, look, the hit. Look, yeah, that might be a byproduct of what you're doing. I just I think if you overcomplicate what you're trying to do, I, I just, I'm just trying to think of them. Um, give me one focus we want to do, coach. I, I want to go for the outside knee. Yeah. The rest of the things are going to bring themselves. Because of that outcome, that means I have to get my body across. I have to keep my feet moving. I have to get my shoulder down because I'm going for his knee. And all that stuff. Otherwise, I go, and, and everything's right. You know, uh, leg position, shoulder position, arms across, arms nice and tight. And all that kind of shit's right. But just kind of one focus, go with his outside knee, drops my body high, gets my shoulder in the right position, um, gets me the target where I'm looking for to take his legs away from him and make sure that my legs are going for him. Yeah. Yeah. So we can play like knee, knee, knee touch, or you can go like you can only leg tackle. So we might do like a like a leg tackle game. I've done it at the schools before, um, and you get consequence if you don't make a leg tackle. So with body on fill. Okay. It might be a nice tackle, but the game is a leg tackle. Then I'm going to penalise him and go back 10 further yards, introduce the second ball, create a line break, something like that. So try and put leg tackles in there as a, as a, as a feature. Or I might then put a, um, a reward. So it might be if you do three leg tackles in a row as a team, <coughs> or four 20 yards. Okay, so if, you, if you're trying to get a response from players, attitudinally and behavioural wise, try and make it worth the while. Give them the why why they need to do it. Um, yeah. Um, just, just got a thing about the ball, Phil. Just you're not allowed to tap the bit. So, um, so just something with, with, with a kind of technique wise as well. Um, we're not going to ask the kids, but if Phil is going in here, on the left side, is that I almost want to feel like if I'm in here, that this head going across them. So you want to try and focus on that and there. Phil goes forward a little bit quicker. Just trying to run through me there. But I can almost feel like I'm moving over just by my arm and my head pushing to one side. So you're looking for that strong head contact. Ideally, the head and the arm in this together. 
they finish on top in the contest and all the rest of it. Make sense? Okay. And there's a million different ways to put legs up, and obviously, as I said, set up whatever works for you that, that's the most uh, appropriate, even if it's something like using the cross of the pitch, probably we'll go to the right and left, we're going to go across. Might start from here. Uh, when those guys turn, it's a late tackle. I have to chase my feet to get the tackle in. Uh, so do like a, a low hit against the pad. Maybe something here. Pad hit. Second effort. Round the corner. Got to make another tackle. So whatever it is, still I'm looking for the late tackle outside me, on the side. Just a quick question around how from was how much time you spent targeting the ball in terms of tackle. Um, we're kind of like a two-man tackling team, so um, which else can we use here? Oh, well. <laughs> 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 here comes some. <laughs> 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 You're not going to hurt me. <laughs> okay, so fundamentally, we're, we're like kind of like a, a two-man tackling team, so a few of it wider than you. Then I was going to. Okay, so in essence, the kind of first guy is trying to go along. So imagine the ball's going from the stand. Phil catching the ball. Which way is he looking at the ball from the stand? He's looking at it. So it opens up a great opportunity for me to try and try and cause some damage to the ball. Maybe some damage to the first point. Okay, so Webby would be making a leg tackle. Then I've got an opportunity to go in here. Again, I'm looking the same thing. Got nice, flashy uh, parts here. Let's try and hit. I'm going to get in nice and tight as I can. And then I'm in a position where I'm controlling them, trying to target what I need to hit. Sometimes the ball, sometimes just the body. But the idea is the first action to hit first. If I start to filter into the room, the legs are taken, and I'm starting like this, I'm not actually trying to hit him. I want to hit him first. The aggressive what I'm doing. Head in tight, all the rest of it. And then, by that, to control the attack. Like I said before, because his legs have gone, okay, so his legs nice and tight, maybe. I'm actually in a position where I can do what I want to do with Phil, twist him, pull him, whatever I want to do, put him up and hold his legs. So, again, you know, small, small thing, most stuff. Not really small. I thought these are just pictures might be late, correct? <laughs> A big run off. <laughs> <laughs> so you might start uh, standing up or kneeling, which is what he's doing. And then, um, nice and close, you can go straight to Phil, he's got to hold his legs to stop there. So you might start in that position, and then Phil tries to power his legs through, and then I can come in with a hit. So you might start like that again if you need a bit of confidence in the contact. The important thing I think is you can also work with the ball carrier. So when this is happening, the ball carrier, what you want him to do, you want to fight, you want to present the ball back, all the rest of it. So when you're coaching it, you advocate the first person going in low? Generally, I've been looking like. So, so, Obviously, it depends on the situation. Well, I, look, I, I kind of, you kind of have, you kind of some principle to try and stick to. Sometimes, off like kickoffs and things like that, when teams are trying to orchestrate um, kick chase lines. So, generally, um, I, I don't know if it's happening at all levels, but but generally, say at um, top level, domestic, European rugby, international rugby. People will try and organise the kick chase, get the winger back to the feet, six, seven back to the feet, 12, 13, and so on. So if you kick, split, stack, whatever, you're kicking somewhere, they're going to try and organise themselves by playing one phase or two phase to get their kick chase organised for the nine kicker. With that then, I might play around with what I'm going to do there. So I might go full on, we're going to try and choke tackle, as in hold, it, hold you up. It might be full on leg tackle, and I put seven behind the line. So when the tackle makes them position, it goes straight over the ball. So just varying things against different opposition, maybe different halves even, give them something different, yeah. But as a general 95% rule, first low, take away his legs, take away momentum, second one, take away time on the ball. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have a little look at some tackle contest work here. They've got two guys. Are you two, different two? Two flankers, just two flankers. There you go. <laughs> One more? Anyone else? There you go. There you go. Uh, you got one, you put it in, mate, yeah? Come prepared, good lad. Okay, so, uh, there anyway. 
Okay, so you're on the side of the board. So if you lie on your back, you're like two pencils, okay? Lie on your back. Face both heads are going that way. Yeah, we're back on the floor. On the floor, yeah. Lying on your back. Yeah, a bit closer now. Okay, so just, just a couple of things without going through loads of different drills and stuff, but just some principles you can bend it, use it, whatever you want to do, really. So you're going to hold on to the ball. That's why I pass it to you. Okay, so his most compromised position, generally, is going to be facing where the tackler is. His best position is where he's tackled, he's almost a dumb position. I know this looks a bit weird. <laughs> okay, the young lads are exploring sexuality still. <laughs> no, no, no. He's certain, he's certain. Okay, so with this kind of position here, the first thing I'm going to try and focus on, and I know um, Greg might differ with me here, is I want to try and prevent him getting the ball back as quickly as possible. So I'm going to cheat a little bit if I can. So as I'm getting to my feet, I want to prevent his recoil. So if you try and present the ball that way, if I try to pull away, on here, he's in a strong position. Just line your side again. Okay, so you try and pull, pull, you can try and present the ball that way with your arms. Pull it in close. Now present the ball. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna find that quite hard. Do it again. Go. Okay, so, so this, this is where I'm trying to stop here, this shoulder point here. So I used to think like just push it down, prevent the recoil. But now if you can try and pull it back, it opens up and then you get the effort to go for the ball. So. Simple kind of practice here, we can go 1v1, you do it threes, turn towards them. You're going to get to your feet as quickly as possible my clap. And we try and target your shoulder first. Yeah. Hold a little bit, release, and then go back towards the balls. You're just going to roll that way. Are you up for this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have seen milk turn quicker, but... Are <laughs> <laughs> we going to go that again? Right, no, no. Face up. Okay, okay. So, so not bad. So all, almost what we're looking for here, if we're lying on one side. Phil? Yeah. Okay, come here. So if I've got Phil on the floor there. Yeah, just turn the way. And he's facing me. It's almost like face me, Phil. When we play it, it's almost like I've got like that first. And then I want to try and get over the ball. The second thing I try and coach the players is if you'll present the ball now. I want to get something in where I can be anchored in a little bit. So when the, the heat's going to come my way, I'm actually using my hips to try and lock myself in for the tackle. Rather than being here, even though I'm in a strong position, split sides, all that kind of stuff, I want to get myself in to fill when it comes on. <laughs> so I've lost that first fight, he's got the ball back here. If I'm in this position here, I don't want to pull against Phil. He's in a strong position. I want to try and so like rip his head off, you know, try and rip the ball away, have that kind of motion there where it's a bit more violent, just try and get the ball away, it's a bit easier, rather than pulling against his strength, pulling against his muscles, or whatever they are. <laughs> okay, so that, that's, kind of, that's kind of the idea of that. Um, generally now I'd say, fair that we get away with the last one from the body. Referee seem to allow um, to do it on the floor. Just that they just, as long as I'm clamped onto something, you'll hear them say, you've survived clear out. Uh, yeah, so yeah. You, the last thing we want to do is give a whole non-penalty when the yeah. person's not actually on the ball. Yeah. Um, so if they get onto the ball, survive the clear out, yeah. normally the clue is the tackle to drag the person yeah. on the ball, yeah. then you're good. Yeah. So, although he says that, if he latch onto something, it gives a good chance for a spider to clear out. So, if I get a hold of something, when I'm in here, if I get the ball great, but if even I'm in here, one person comes to clear me out, and I'm sitting nice and tight. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm locked in a bit of a better position. Then he requires his mate to come in now, mate. Come on, can you come? <laughs> he comes in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm in a better position there. So here I'm just locked in there, in a stronger position. Someone else has to come in, which means their attack is one number down, etc. Et et so being in a title contest, creating more of a fight, uh, more of a contest, that's why I call it a title contest, reduce the attacking options. Get you embarrassed by a 17 year old kid. That's where it goes. So, if we're getting partners, fellas, all we do is just give that a bit of a go. Try and prevent his recall on his shoulder, and you're looking for the fastest person to get off the floor, get back into the wall to break down. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, no, no, you, you, you can do it. Just I don't think I'm, things happen so fast. The level we're at. You know what it is? In fact, I'm feeling like here. I don't feel I'm like, like this leg is long. I don't feel I'm like here. I don't feel the transition. You got to be better as well. A bit more compact. Yeah. 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 Start off there, then and then you go around to the fight. Try to fight off them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Okay, I'll show you some just quick stench position. So three of the four this time. Yeah, all, all done there. This time there's one ball between three of them. Again, use this just kind of like a like a, almost like a warm-up thing sometimes to them a lot closer. Ball gets passed along the top of them. Okay, on a clap, one person gonna present. So if you present on the end, you try to go there, you wanna go around as the first man in to the attack. You're gonna to race to try and get into the space here to win the race. And again, I'm looking at shoulder height, can I win the shoulder part of the low? Head down centre. So something like that where they pass the ball along, go straight away. If the guy in the middle has the ball, he just chooses the side to go to, they organise themselves to be first man in or jack one. So we're not just a small extension. Um, other than that, just simple things uh, where you may have one player on the floor there, one over there. Um, <coughs> okay, um, so imagine you're both playing this way, towards me. Yeah. Which means you want to present the ball that way, yeah? Yeah. So you've got a ball as well, can put the ball? Okay, and you might have someone in the middle here, you've got someone nominating one or two, whatever, he's got two contests all the time to go to. So you can either go with that one or that one, depending on where it gets pointed. They change how they're going to present the ball, be it a squeeze ball, be it roll on the floor, do something different, just to give him a different stimulus. They might have someone else here to apply a different kind of pressure. Um, then build it up to something a little bit more live and, and so on. Anything else on the title contest? Just a couple of key things to look at. I want to squeeze. Yeah. When he's squeezed, yeah. we're going to get a ball. Just get in and pick him up. Yeah. Bring it back when you get knocked. Yeah, well, I can get another ball, Phil. <coughs> like, for, for a squeeze, please for me to squeeze. It's actually, the, the, what, what, why, do, why do people squeeze? To what? Great. So, well, what, 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 what's the primary purpose? Okay, anyone else? Any other takers on that? You can't see it. You can't see it. You can't see it, but, but that doesn't cause me necessarily that much of a problem. Okay, so, so what is, well, Craig will tell you, where is he? The gate's narrow. The gate's narrow. So the, the, the whole point is here. The, my only point of entry now is this. Whereas if you're lying perpendicular to me, there's three lines I can get in now. So there's more space for me to get in and get my feet in and all that kind of stuff or get myself locked in here. If the gate's narrow, it's very hard for like two jacklers to get themselves in. So you've got one person, the gate's nice and narrow. You've got a good target line as the first person in to try and clean. In a way of so that's why people tend to squeeze ball, I, I believe. Anyway. <laughs> so Phil squeeze ball, as he's about to go here, generally, I just want to try and clamp on here. The benefit for me as a jackal if he's squeeze balling is 
I've got something to attach myself to straight away and quite then hard to shift. I don't need to know where the ball is. All I want to try and do is get a hold of something in here that prevents him pushing the ball back. So the, the downside of squeezing is, in terms of a jack play, he's landing on his chest here. I'm actually going to try and get here, which prevents the ball getting away. That's why you see people get knocked back. They're actually still a hold of the ball. Say again, sorry. So he's if he's on the opposition team and he's presenting, but he's down. The ball, it's it's like a squeeze ball, yeah. Yeah, but he's, but he's rolling and presenting the sideways. With the ball, but it's, it's not as easy for you to access as a jacket to get. To the so if he goes down, <coughs> yeah, and then he's doing what? He's doing turn to put the ball to the side. Yeah, so he's, he's presenting. But like again, everything's about I suppose point of entry. So this. You could be the tackler getting back to your feet. My first thing, as I said, is that I'm going to try and prevent this kind of... I want to prevent motion. I want to prevent him trying to get the ball away from contact. I want to have a situation where I get to contest the ball. So my first thing is to try and prevent it. Also, my eyes are scanning what's going on here because I'm, I'm here, I'm low, I'm looking. That's my primary target. So if he does happen to go from the squeeze, and I'm here and he tries to turn, he's trying to turn now, Phil, it's actually quite, you know, it's actually quite hard for me. If he's already done it, he's there. But my next thing is then to go for this, and then for that. So you, you, you're all adapting, so something I showed the ball is just there. I might do a simple thing where Phil's going to try and continue to try and present the ball in different ways. And I'm going to try and keep fighting for it. And then I move in. And the time I'm in that kind of position. So all the time trying to move, find different positions, getting yourself used to working nice and low. Uh, is Craig there? Doing Craig. Yeah. Okay, just bring you in for a sec, just. <laughs> Anything from you around. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Anything from you around that type of contest, specifically what you're looking for? I know you mentioned some things before in terms of the man in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just, sorry, just having a conversation over there. So that first man in, obviously, hands on the floor past the ball. We can't reward a turnover as that's the first action unless we see positive intent. So that first man in trying to win possession of the ball, hands on the floor, reloads himself and gets on the ball before any defenders arrive to clear him out. We can work with that because he showed he's trying to be positive. He stays in that position, hands on, on the floor, past the ball, waits for the clear out to come, and it's the clear out that drags him back onto the ball. He's not going to be rewarded for that. He's made that clear out twice as hard by front loading his weight with his hands off, off his on the floor. Um, so those are two pitches we work on. If you want to anchor, you can get on the body. Just had a conversation over there about not on the ball but wrap around the body. No issues with that if you release and use him as an anchor point. Don't expect to hold non-penalty because you're not actually on the ball. Um, it forces two men to come in to get him out of the way. Any questions to Craig about that? Head height, last height, hip height, head height. Look at that head height compared to hips. If their head's lower than hips, you can ping them. Um, not because, <coughs> because they're not weight bearing. So, not really in terms of head and hips. First, it's whether the hands are whether the hands are there, whether the knees on the deck. Um, so, actually, to be fair. If you look at a loose head prop when he's hidden, if the jackal is in that position, it's probably quite a good position. He's clearly supporting his weight, his hands are on the floor, provided they're on the ball. He's in a position of strength, as we call it. So head height, hip height, front height, really feature. One thing we, uh, we talked about before was <coughs> around players are so much stronger now, certainly at the elite level, so they are more stronger in, them, in their position. So in the past, people have said, if your shoulders are below your hips, you're probably in a weak position that you couldn't support yourself. The way the top end of the game has gone now, the players are so physically strong and, and strong that they, they are stronger in that position now, so it becomes less of a yeah, thing for you guys. Then. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the last thing we saw that we look at was just kind of um, like phase defence. So m most of the kind of stuff I do will be like based around a game, and all I do is just put different constraints on the game. So the best practice for them is to see different pictures, react to different scenarios rather than trying to isolate all the time like a short side defence or a rock spacing defence or a scramble defence. I can do that within a game, just keep manipulating it. So generally the things I'm looking for is to get appropriate spacing. So I'm looking for guys to be appropriate to the attack. And then secondly, for them to stay square. And uh, by, by that I mean is that if the attack was coming towards me here, if I'm turned in all the time like this, you'll see a lot of people um, like ball watch or rock watch, look like this, the body's always going in. People that defend on the man, 
rotten like this and they're looking up and they end up following the man out of the way. So the hips and shoulders are always going one direction. I want them to try and be square, so whenever the attack go one way, we can all adjust together to the left or to the right. So I'm looking at spacing and staying square. If they don't do that, I create a consequence of create a line breakers. In reality, in a game, if Phil was running towards me, and I've kind of my hips over front my inside shoulder, I might scrag him a little bit here, he's going to get five, six yards. International level, that's for now, that's 20 yards. So I need the players to understand, I need it to be nice and square, so I'll create a 20, 20 meter line break. I go from that. If I penalise a player, take him out. Likewise, I might reward somebody for good effort or continue a good phase of D. We'll turn over the ball, we'll have a kick chase beside the defender, deep inside their 22, something like that. So, in essence, what we'll do with the boys now, we'll give them two, two teams. We'll play to maybe the 40 to the touchline, to the foul line, sorry. Um, I'll just go through it and see what you think. Yeah, so guys, he's going to play on this end. Just the players around, staying square, got the bells inside them, so we just get that touch around, purpose of the people, staying square, got the bells inside. Okay, why is it tough to 
So players now asking the players to hit the ground and then to, to, to go for the ball and the test. So now what players doing is, is bringing all the elements that we've looked at in isolation in times, so looking at the techniques and now bringing them into a game based approach. So players are going to find that the players are questioning is identified with the players that the defence wants to put the game. Now we've got three players in the backfield. Those three players are looking to organise the good information to put out of the defence. Come on, 
So pause to see his questions to uh, ask the players to play back as you said, uh, and back the players and their groups, uh, to generate that feedback they think they can improve on. One of the things is their slow club on the ball, uh, with their, with their, with their left hand. So pause asks them to look at the crossbar, and to the crossbar to try and look at the crossbar. So just uh, all the way up here. Two, one, 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 two, one
And I'm just going to play the numbers a little bit first, okay? So, so whenever I shove one, two, Okay, so we're back. It's only the team that are defending. Who's defending first? Two. Go, 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 Building blocks off there, creating there's different spaces, different sizes for the players, different well, players. Well, raise up the hands, raise up the hands, please, go the hands. Let's go twos, twos, twos. has a soul of itself and of energy about itself. Uh, why were the Reds good defensively? After the moon again, why were the Reds good defensively? What did they do well? They were really good on team. Yeah. We had no new people with that. We all faced backwards and didn't have any knowledge. Pushed up, no one could turn around looking at that corner of the space. They're working. Sorry. They're working well as a unit. They're all working together doing their own jobs. And especially when they come into the ball to make the contact. They're driving over, if they need an extra minute, they're putting the extra minute in to try and get over the ball and slow us down in attack to make us you know, less prepared. That's me. Do you agree with that, Red? Yeah, fuck yeah, they do. Look at that. Yeah, we smashed it. We smashed it. Um, it's important, players. You know, whenever, whenever you, you, you do some training wise, like ask them. Like, if you thought you did something poorly, ask them. You know, if you got cut two or three times, ask them what they saw. Because with that, you get some good learning from that as well. Okay. And the other thing, I guess, probably meant, um, for me with that is both sides of the ball you can always work at. So a lot of us look at defence there, spacing, staying square, improved massively during the, during the course of it. Is I was also looking then for like speed change for me, just showing his abs, look at that. Um, showing, showing the speed change, the first man into the breakdown. So the ball pair that's going in, I created a turnover a few times against you, so you could into it. If you weren't in fast enough, did not. I created a turnover saying not in quick enough, not quick enough. So even in the attack, we get something out of it, try and focus on this guy getting in to kill the contest, not to allow me to contest the ball. So you can do both sides of the ball. Guys, can I just ask me to walk this way? Is that all right? We just walk, head back over, if that's all right. Hips close, okay. So here, get in our hips, mate. 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 Okay, that's pretty cool. Anything else? Yeah, go on, you take one. It's more for the head, so if you like twisting one way, you can try it that way. It's a lot better than you try and hang it out. And was that comfortable for you as players to, to be in that position as well? Did that feel more comfortable for you? So that's really, that's really good. And yourself? Uh, full show back, then we're going to go for the uh, jackal, so they can't like, extend the arm out. Yeah, really good. Okay, so would that be things that you're going to take away and work on yourselves? Yeah, fantastic. But again, guys, you're free to, or you're free to stay around if you want to listen to some of the questions. 
uh, but you're free to head back if you want to leave the equipment, get the equipment as you go. But thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, okay, we're just going to sort of pull that together a little bit now and then we've got time for, for more questions as we go. Uh, Webby, have you got your whiteboard knocking on? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, in terms of, we started off the night, we looked at a lot of sort of technique and skill stuff around that, which probably took a long time, in us, probably time in us discussing that with you guys. Realistically, Paul, as you said, you would only spend limited amounts of time doing that, doing that type of stuff. And we probably spent less time on the game side of it because obviously we were just looking at how you would then implement them techniques within that game. So everything we've done really today, in the, this evening, in that, that first part of the session, could easily be transferred into that game. And they would, you would just focus on perhaps one or two key points within that game and reward and consequence. Yeah. So, so, so generally, the two core fundamental things you need to get right is spacing and staying square. So that will always be part of what I'm trying to coach when I'm doing that. If we've been cut around the rock or a space around the rock's an issue, I'll, I'll make that a primary focus and I'm going to try and coach that. But rather than doing a rock spacing, you know, drill, rock here, rock there, rock there, full around the corner, get set the fender shape, full in the corner, I'll just play games and they get simulated with those kind of scenarios so many times. But my coaching focus, the things I write down on a piece of paper before I go and coach, is rock spacing, spacing my one, two, three. Where's my three standing? Where's my two standing? So I'm actually going in there specifically looking for that. And then I'll get another coach maybe say, right, can you help me with general spacing? And if I've got a player that's injured, I might say, can you look at the backfield? Because I'm too close to the line. What's happening in the backfield and so on. So try and co-coach with the rest of the assistant coach as much as possible. And be very specific with what it is I'm trying to get the outcome of the session. Not just facilitate it. I'm looking for rug spacing. I'm looking for staying square. And then the rest of it takes care of itself. And obviously, again, one of the key points you mentioned over there was getting players to ask if you've been cut, when you say you've been cut on the inside, asking the attack, what did you see, mm. to, to allow that to happen. So that gives you some learning from that as well. Yeah, I think, look, they'll know more than we do. So the, the more that they talk to each other, the more that they experience, it's important that they speak to each other about it because when they're playing on this and we're sat in the stand, there's not a lot we can do. So rather, they try and solve the problems as much as possible, which is why I don't do drills. Just trying to do games and like all sorts of different games, but just trying to have constraints of things I'm looking for. You know, if they can communicate as much as possible to themselves in groups of four, groups of three, half a team, half a team, you know, the more people are standing like this, one person or two people end up talking. If you've got groups of three or four, everyone starts talking. So the, the, the smaller the numbers as well, I think is quite good for feedback and getting one from the opposite team as well talking to each other is it's quite an effective way. Craig, can I just bring you in on that as well, if that's all right? Just in terms of, I know you guys spend time going into into the Premiership clubs as well and, and what have you, and, and into the England uh, camps as well. Does that give you good insight into practicing your game, refereeing in your games, rather than obviously you've got the review bit that you would do perhaps on video or whatever, but having practice? Yeah, the that. biggest flaw for us as referees is we go from Saturday to Saturday. There's no time in the middle to practice. So going to club sessions, England sessions, getting to ref those live sessions certainly helps us. And it's so I'm from Staffordshire, so we're certainly trying to encourage clubs, coaches to get referees in um, to their Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday sessions. Gives the players and you a chance to ask us questions, gives us a chance to actually practice what we're doing on a Saturday. Um, otherwise, we just go from weekend to weekend, probably keep making the same mistake for a lot longer because we can't actually apply ourselves in simulated games like that in the week. So the more collaboration we can get there, the, definitely the better. And it, I'd probably look, as the game has changed, uh, Obviously, it's a lot quicker now, certainly at the higher levels. I suppose the challenge around positioning in that, in that tackle and that breakdown area is really key for you guys to see the stuff you've talked about in terms of where the tackle's been affected, but also the things that happens after the tackle and the contest, that stuff that Paul was looking at. So that's going to be key to learn as well, isn't it, in that situation? 100%, uh, yeah. I'd rather get bundled over on a Tuesday night when there's no cameras watching than on a Saturday when it goes viral on YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any any questions from anyone else? Uh, Andy, is there anything from you there that you need yeah, to... Yeah, there's a couple of things that came out on the board um, and something else from earlier on. I think you mentioned earlier, right at the start when we were doing some of the, uh, some of the block stuff, some of the pummeling at the beginning, yeah. you talked back then about the 
importance of having some variability when you do that. Yeah. Um, can you maybe just give a bit more depth about why you think that's important to have that variability when you're doing some of that stuff? Um, if, if me and Phil were just pummeling away, <coughs> say we go out with a pump of three minutes to get ourselves warm with, we're doing everything in and now focus really hard on my technique, and all the rest of that's normal. We go for three minutes. One, it's pretty tiresome and boring for him, but all he ends up doing is getting good at pummeling like this. Yeah. So I actually want to try and develop other skills away. So actually in tackling and all the rest of it, moving into it. So primarily for pummeling is to take away boredom. Yeah. Because once they get good at it, this kind of stuff, it's quite easy. You can, that's why people start talking, they just hit each other. They're not focused on what they're doing because they're bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want them to try and keep stimulating what they're doing. So do so that, move problems. around, make a hit, go back into it, find a different part and so on. In terms of the tackle skill, the same thing. It's like if we, if we do a, a short side defense drill, say I've got 15, you, you know, teams tend to get around this area, three forwards off nine, do something around there, they might have a tail at the back and all that kind of stuff. They're then creating a blind side, so teams then come back to the short side, see if you've overfolded. So you could say, well, I'm going to defend with either three or four against five. And just do that, we're going to have three or four defending against five, but I'm going to get that in the game. If I go, I do what I'm going to do, I'm going to go 12 v 15. So I'll play 12 v 15 and I'll go to the attack. I want you to try and focus on return attack. If they stay, go open. So they've got to defend appropriate to what the attack's doing. So I'd rather do it like that than I. It takes away the need for me to try and manipulate something and someone just gets good at drilling 3v5. To see the same pitch, the same people all the time. So when you see those pictures happening in those games that you play, do, do you um, freeze certain situations to talk to players about choices made, uh, missed yeah. opportunities, that sort of stuff as well? That's well, I, I, I get about 18 minutes a week to prepare a team for internationals. So it's not like a, like a long time. So I'm, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm literally going to play a game where I get as many things as I can in there. Yeah. Obviously, I've been with them for a year and a half, two years now, I suppose. So, so their understanding of what I'm trying to do is, is up there. Yeah. But to keep going higher and higher, we'll take that World Cup prep to make a quantum leap to where we want to get to. Um, so like game-based learning, I think, you know, if I, if I do something, I don't know, what say 4v4 constantly, like Owen Farrell is going to literally just look at me and go, kind of my dad back, you know, like, what, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> 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 so it's, 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 it's going to be something where you're going to try and stimulate them. And I think the more you, you can do like 6v6s, but again, 12v12, but again, you know, in very that 6v6, you might say the parameter is one in the backfield. You might say this one here is tackle control, I want to stick in the tackle. The next one is going to be I want to reload because I've got reload focus. It might be that in the pitch that you have, in the five meter trams, you have to reload to go. And it might be a bib up an attacker, that's a key play for them, where two have to go into the tackle all the time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Bastro or something like that. You have to get two in the tackle to try and control them. So just anything around the game, think about what what the, what the game's telling you and then set up something that mimics the game but not the game. Yeah. So it has a sort of transfer back to the game? Transfer as much as possible and you know always again if you've got an opportunity to question we, we don't get that that much because of how intense our training sessions are but uh, and, and how fast they are um, so you're kind of on the hoof kind of saying you're not square you know or what, what do you think there you're going to try and answer me whilst he's blowing out his hoop but you're going to try and answer me you know like I didn't follow I didn't look up. The other thing I thought was quite interesting to start when you were talking about some of the pubbing stuff was you talked about how long you spend doing that, which wasn't very long, is it? So yeah. I know you said the guys are now used to you. Yeah. I think you said something like two minutes, three two, minutes. Two, three minutes, yeah. yeah two, three minutes, three times a week, two, twice a week even, yeah. So do you say in your 18 minutes, and a large proportion of that is actually a game-based action? So that, 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 that two minutes of pubbing stuff wouldn't be, so that is 18 minutes on-field, on-field <coughs> training. So it might be about 18 to 20, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions for Paul or Craig? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, particularly with the, the phase play, is there any areas of the field that you would recommend using? So, the start, so you said, sort of where would you use the, use the drift, where match would you use the drift? So, the, the question is just going to, sorry, I'm just going to repeat it a bit yeah. back. So, the question is around where on the field we might use different styles of defence. Yeah. 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 If, I, if, I, if I answer that with kind of why I start with defence, so um, for me, there's kind of like two ways of defending like philosophically wise so there's either I want to get the ball back or I want to prevent a try so when I get a ball back it tends to lend itself to being aggressive being the being offensive uh, line speeds um, you know hunting all that all that kind of thing if you like not prevent a try it tends to words in my mind was like cohesion integrity tidy uh, neat 
generally kind of up and out. That, that kind of thing was in my mind. So I wanted to be this aggressive, go get them kind of defense. So my philosophy is I want to take away time and space. And I do that by getting off the line hard. To get off the line hard, I have to have earned the right by getting good spacing. To maximize my spacing, I need to stay square. Because if I've got good space to start off with, and we all come in straight away, I've lost the space. If I get too wide, it's actually false width because the short line has to turn me in as well. So kind of that was my main kind of thinking when I started it off. To then come back to what you're talking about is I think get off the line as much as possible. If you have 7v3, that might be a time where you're going to sit and kind of wait a little bit. But I don't like the idea of turning your hips because again you open inside shoulder for a tackle. So I want to try and stay square even from traveling across the pitch a little bit. So you know, the, the situation in games are dictated. We need to vary our line speed if they've got huge numbers on us. And it could be numbers or it could be space. So they might only have three attackers, half the pitch. And if I've only got two defenders or three defenders, I'm still going to be quite passive probably because the space can hurt me as well. Any final questions? Oh, sorry, one more, yeah. The one you looked at earlier in terms of the two-man tackle, yeah. if you imagine they're the third guy, because essentially you're creating a, a more type situation there, is that third person that would be not on the, your right-hand side? I'm not, I'm not creating more because I'm trying to hit him. But when you were going low, say you managed to hold him up, that third person, are yeah. we looking for them to put in tight or get into that passing lane, essentially? Uh, yes, so, 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 sorry for the next part. So, with, with this 2v1, where's Webby? Comes <laughs> he's about 100 meters away! <laughs> oh, no, no, he's just small. small. <laughs> Perspective, man. I've done that on purpose. Okay, so the, the idea is when whether he's tackling, even, 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 he's in low. Even if I'm hitting Phil here, although I want to control, I actually want to be violent with it. I want to get him to the floor. You know, I, I want to get him to the floor. I want, I want to hurt. That's, that's my aim. Is, uh, Legally, but I want to hurt him physically to dominate him to get him to the floor because I'm contesting more. <laughs> I'm not a choke, tackle, and holding up philosophy. I think that if he's got there, he's got good leg drive, he starts going forward, I start holding myself up to problems. So that's why I want to try and be aggressive in the tackle. So there's two ways to slow the ball down. One is because I've got time and space taken away with my line speed. Next thing, I want to be aggressive with tackle. And the third thing is then contesting the floor. Whenever this is happening around us, but everyone else is square, so imagine someone else is tackling Phil there. This next person's here. If he starts coming short, I can square off. Then I can get my whip back straight away after that. Is that what you're asking? Or yeah, yeah so, that, so the rest of the line, you want them just to stay square and just see it rather than continually press and actually cut out any further options that way. Well, if, he, if, if, if he's here with the ball, that is the option. I don't know how he's going to get the ball over there. But for me, you know, I, I, like, he, He's like Nakawara or something like that, trying to get the ball over my head here. So if I'm in here, and even if I'm underneath him, he's got his arms free, this next person to square here, and someone going to short, I can hit and adjust. But what he's seen is me, so he doesn't want to offload the ball. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's, you're like, a, um, like an accordion. You know, like when, when he's coming in, this has brought me in. As soon as I commit to this tackle, this next person's got the same spacing, comes in with me, then gets himself back out to get the width back. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you very much, Paul. Thanks very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed that. Oh, sorry, there's one more question. Sorry, I didn't see the back. Would you encourage the players in a defensive line to call out the player that they're defending against? No. Um, <coughs> the, 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 the reason is I'm, I'm not a man on defence. So, I, I like, again, if we've got Webby here and, and Phil here, and I've got man here in front of me and if I'm man on and so I give the ball to Webby and you dummy past you and you're going on like an overs and I go he's my man he's my man and Webby sees now space you can go Webby it's your chance to shine son <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's that's why I don't like man on defense so the, the, the one thing with being like a channel based defense is it helps people like aren't as athletic as others so if you square I'm here whenever Webby's going here and start trying to watch the form inside, I can then adjust and protect him. If he shifts the ball off, now you pass very good lad, I can then move off and the person on the outside is doing exactly what I was doing. So I try and try and stay in the channel as much as possible. So keeping the spacing, so if, if the next man should be cutting in and, and hitting me, yeah. so if, as long as yeah. you're keeping the spacing, then it, it all constantly yeah. so up like you're recording. Right, yeah. so if we've got, so we've got any four here, any four people to stand up here, 
Um, Thinking there's two more attackers here. So imagine they're all they're all going to go forward. We've got one more on the outside. So just keep just keep going forward. Like we're gonna we're gonna pass the ball along the line here. Okay, so just keep going forward. Just see what takes it. Just the ball. Okay, so just go forward. Just keep us on. Okay, so the idea is you go a bit forward, a bit faster, fellas. So the tail's being expected. <laughs> okay. So imagine you've got line speed going forward. Okay. Okay, we instantly get a kind of situation where we've got two people should draw themselves in towards each other. Very bad demonstration, but the idea is that as the ball's moving along, all the time is we're putting their skill set under pressure. And from what I've seen, it's pretty ordinary, so we should get the turn. <laughs> we're going forward all the time is every time you're always seeing the pass, you're always seeing the pass from where the ball is. And generally, hips are turned, which means you're exposing this to get hit. So if you're receiving the ball, so you can put it forward. From Webby, that's the ball here. And I'm here, like this is now a situation where I know we just continue moving forward, but I can now engage and get a good collision in. And when I do that, you're just going to close up with me, you're nice and square. Okay, he tries to get his arm on the back. I float you on a position to adjust, and the next person, and so on. Yep. Did that answer your question? <coughs> I really want to thank you all for taking the time uh, to come to this evening's session. I hope it's been beneficial. I hope you've taken lots away. Um, I'd like to thank Paul for giving his time up to come down and Craig for uh, giving his time up as well. So, thank you. Again, thanks to Wales for hosting us. If you have had drinks or bottles on the pitch, if you could take them off for us, um, that would be really, really helpful. If you want to feed back to us, use Twitter at England Rugby. Uh, all those things just about tonight. We really, really appreciate your feedback. It helps us um, generate interest in these events as well and support what we're trying to do with coach development as well. So we really appreciate it. Thanks again and hope to see, hope to see you all soon at another event. Thank you. Thank you.